All right, good evening. It is 7.02 p.m. on August 31st, and I would like to call this meeting of the Lansing City Council to order and ask that the clerk please call the roll. Uh, good evening, uh, Council Member Betts. Here. Council Member Dunbar. Here. Council Member Garza. Is Council Member Garza here? He's not here this evening, he'll be excused. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Hussein. Here. Councilmember Jackson. Present. Councilmember Spadafore. Present. Councilmember Spitzley. Here. Councilmember Wood. Here. There are seven members present at quorum. Councilmember Garza is absent. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, first item on the agenda is our meditation and pledge of allegiance. So is there anyone on council, the clerk, or the mayor who wish us to keep someone in our thoughts as we have a moment of observation? Seeing none, I will just ask folks. Hold oh. on, I was raising my finger, but you were looking at it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I'm thinking I'm still there. Um, this may have no meaning um, to some, but I'm just going to say Wakanda forever, yeah. and that'll cover it. There you go. Thank you, Councilmember Dunbar. All right, if you all please join me in a moment of observe and uh, silent meditation. Thank you. Now for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, you have for your approval the printed council proceedings of August 24th. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice President. Sure, I would move the printed council proceedings. There's a proper motion before us. Is there any discussion on the proceedings? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Councilmember Betts. Yes. Councilmember Dunbar. Councilmember Hussein. Yes. Councilmember Jackson. Yes. Councilmember Spadafore. Um, yes. Councilmember Spitzley. Yes. Councilmember Wood. Yes. Seven yeas, zero nays. The proceedings are approved, uh, which takes us to the order of comments by council members and the city clerk. Sure, I will open it up real quick. Just let all of you know that are here for um, a the, the uh, item related to the um, the Montgomery drain assessment role that did not come out of the committee of the whole this evening. So that will not be considered this evening. I don't know where that falls on our agenda exactly in terms of legislative items, but it will not be approved. It will not be considered this evening. Um, so uh, that's my council, my council member comments. Are there comments from other council members or the mayor? Uh, well, council members at this moment. All right, seeing none, Mr. Clerk, do you have anything to add to the discussion? Um, not tonight, thank you. All right, and just as a reminder to everybody, the clerk will be with us on September 14th uh, at Cow to present his election presentation um, before the ballots go out. So. All right, seeing none, let's move on, Mr. Clerk. Okay, we are to community event announcements. If there's anyone um, in the virtual audience who has a community event they would like to announce, we'll give you one minute to tell us the details. Uh, you need to raise your hand at this time, uh, virtually. And you do that by uh, star nine on a telephone, option Y on a Mac, alt Y on Windows, or on the participant screen, there should be a place to click raising your hand. And I see no hands, so we will uh, move on, and I will announce um, that uh, to speak for public comment on one of the public hearings uh, are the items on the consent agenda, resolutions for action. Um, you will uh, be given up to three minutes to speak. You do need to virtually raise your hand. Um, as I just indicated uh, by using one of those methods on the Zoom. Um, and we will be closing sign up at the end of the first speaker. So please go ahead and begin raising your hands. Um, and with that, we are to the mayor's comments. Mr. Clerk, before we move on, um, 
I just, Loretta Sanoi often has a community event announcement and her hand went up while you were saying how to raise the hand. So I just want to clarify that she, she's raising her hand for public comment and not um, uh, the event announcement. So I'm just going to call on her okay. for just a minute. Okay. Loretta, were you, were you raising your hand for a vendor community or input? I'm sorry. Public comment. Public comment. All right. Thank you. We'll, we'll get back to you then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we're to the mayor's comments. Uh, Mayor Shore, sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you, Mr. President. First, um, I want to thank everybody who showed up to the senior fair uh, last week. We did our first drive-through senior fair and um, really didn't know what to expect. And we had, uh, it started at 11. We had our first people there at 9.30. Uh, we uh, started the, the moving cars through at about 10.30 and we served 500 people in about an hour and a half, we probably could have served 800 people. Um, so I'm sorry for anybody who showed up near the end and, and the food and the resource bags were gone, but um, it was a very good success. It was great to see people. Um, they didn't mind waiting in their cars in line with masks on. Um, thanks to all of our park staff, we did a really great job. Um, Want to remind everybody we've got some Walking Wednesdays coming up where we're doing some filmings. Um, we've had a really good time with these. Um, we'll be at the, the Willow Walnut Comstock Park neighborhood. We'll be at Bethlehem Lutheran and we'll be at First Presbyterian. Um, so these are all great uh, ways to show up our community. We're, we're videoing these and then we're going to come up with some videos and one big video at the end. Um, so that way we can still show off our city while not congregating with too many people and, and, uh, and getting too near each other. Um, and finally, this is one of my last chances to remind everybody to please go and fill out your census if you haven't already done so. Um, the, uh, unfortunately, the federal government has shortened the census period and it will be ending at the end of September. Um, I personally believe it should be longer and should go at least through October as originally um, planned. But um, while we're on a shortened time frame, um, if you haven't filled out your census, please do that. Uh, it's quick, it's easy, and it's a lot of money for the city. And um, and if you know anybody who hasn't filled it out, please tell them it, it, it's got to be filled out. It's necessary. This is tremendously important for, for Lansing and uh, for all the services that, that we provide. Um, so don't forget to fill out your census. Uh, I'll remind you one more time in a few weeks, but we've got until the end of September. Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Clerk. Okay, <clears throat> we are to uh, the order of public comment on legislative matters, and that does include the resolutions listed on the consent agenda and resolution of action, as well as uh, the following public hearings that I will read into the record. Um, number one, an ordinance to eliminate uh, to the prohibition on street parking from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. Number two, an ordinance to eliminate the annual and temporary permits for overnight street parking. Number three, an ordinance to regulate on-street parking during snow emergencies. And then number four is uh, consideration of the disposition of city property, transferring properties administered by the Lansing Housing Commission to the Lansing Housing Commission. Hey, um, oh, sorry, it's all you. <laughs> Um, do we want uh, Council Member Dunbar and Hussein to give overviews of those? Yeah, let's start with the uh, Council Member Dunbar. We're going to do this again. Um, if you could give an overview, please, on the resolutions that came out of the Public Service Committee and what they do. Just real quick, please. Okay. The basic gist of it is we are <clears throat> proposing to repeal the overnight parking ban from 2 to 5, um, eliminate the permit system, um, that charges $125 to have a permit um, to be on the street and establishes an emergency um, scenario where if there is a need for uh, snow and ice removal that uh, we can enact an off street, um, I don't know what you call it, announcement and make everybody get off the street. So. Um, Anyway, that's thus, thus making it illegal to park on the street during a thus story. making it illegal to park on the street. I don't know if that was too cursory and if Councilmember Betts wants to add anything to that. Okay, we've repeated it so many trade. times. Okay. All right, and then we will um, go to Councilmember Hussein, our Vice President, to discuss the fourth public hearing this evening, Mr. Vice President. 
Sure. So we've been, you know, working this issue uh, for quite some time. Uh, back in May, I believe it was, uh, we were charged with um, uh, the potential of amending, I should say, Chapter 216, which would uh, per permit the Lansing Housing Commission to own property for its purposes in its own name. Now, we had a lot of discussion uh, regarding access to capital at that time, the disposition of property, things of that nature. Um, and, and really, you know, what was a pretty public process, um, we didn't receive much in the way of uh, public opposition. And ultimately, uh, back in May, we did move to amend Chapter 260 to, again, allow for the Lansing Housing Commission to own property uh, for its purposes in its own name. What we are now looking at uh, is, is essentially executing the next step of that process and the actual transferring of our interest uh, in these properties um, to the Lansing Housing Commission. Uh, and this would be by quick claim deed. I believe there's 227 properties uh, that would be part of this uh, property transfer. Uh, and the LSC would pay to the city, um, I believe it's $1 per property. And so that's the, uh, what I should say, that's the subject of tonight's public hearing. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, all right, there we are, Mr. Clerk. Okay, uh, we are to public comment on legislative matters, the actual public comment portion. Uh, so our first speaker is Loretta Stanaway, followed by Dan Decker. Go ahead, Loretta. Hello, um, on the parking, I think that the city council did an admirable job over a number of months listening to multiple people put input into a reasonable and fair solution to the parking issue. So my first thought is leave it alone, don't change it. Second thought is if you must change it, then let's look at some other options that haven't been considered as far as I'm aware in the past. One of those is if a landlord owns a house that he rents out to say three or four different people and there are three or four different cars and there's parking for two cars, for example, he be required to purchase as part of his rental inspection approval two permits or however many more permits he needs than there are spaces to park within his property. And that, uh, of course, you know, you're going to say, well, then that just going to raise the rent and that's going to be hard on the people that it's hard on already. But, you know, we've got to do something. There has to be a way of bringing in some income, for one thing. There has to be a way of remedying the crowded streets, for another thing. And somewhere along the way, somebody's going to have to bite this bullet. The other option is to consider what happens in larger cities frequently. Uh, New York is an example, New York City, certainly not on that scale, uh, but perhaps the landlord or a homeowner needs to purchase parking space in front of their properties and make that part of the deed of the property is to own a space in front of that house that needs more parking than their driveway permits. So these are my thoughts at this time. I hope you'll take them into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And I do want to remind folks that um, now the first speaker has finished. So if you have not already raised your hand, uh, we, are, we have closed sign in. So um, just the people who have already raised their hand uh, will be uh, called on. Next, we have Dan Decker, followed by our Cole Bauck. Okay. Um, I would just like to ask the chairman if he could clarify the status of the Montgomery drain assessment role as to when you think that will be available. Uh, yeah, sorry, my screen flecked up. Uh, so we don't normally respond to public comment, but I just, I didn't give enough detail, I suppose. Um, that will be, uh, it's been made available to council as of like 530 this evening or something along those lines, but we'll discuss it at the seven, uh, I'm sorry, the September 14 committee of the whole meeting. Um, as we were planning to this evening. Thank you. Hey, uh, was that the end of your comments? That's finished, right. Okay. Uh, next we have R. Cole Balk followed by Dr. Brent Crane. Yes, uh, good evening members of the council, Mayor Shore and Clerk Swope. Um, I have been a resident of the greater Lansing area for almost 40 years. I've lived in Lansing itself for 30 years. I've had my house in the West Side neighborhood for the last 22 years. Um, and I'm really disappointed with what you're seemingly ready to do, which is to abolish the overnight street parking ban. I've spoken on this issue numerous times. 
And I don't understand for the life of me why you're undoing what you just spent all this time doing earlier this year, which I thought for the first time in, in my time that it was an apt compromise between enforcing the ban as it was and eliminating the ban. I don't get it what, at all. Um, you know, I've lived in this neighborhood, as I said, for a while. And for the first time, I'm actually, we are actively exploring leaving not only the West Side neighborhood, but probably the city of Lansing. Um, the condition of the neighborhoods uh, and issues such as the traffic and the fast cars moving down the streets, the overnight parking, uh, yard and home maintenance, uh, code compliance, noise levels, uh, the impact of rentals in the neighborhood have really, this neighborhood is not what it was when I moved in here that long ago when I said specifically I wanted to live between Saginaw and St. Joe and Verlinden and MLK. Now I'm talking about the neighborhood, but I, I just need to stress to you that I, I don't understand the need to have our streets look like any other big street in Chicago or other, other places where there are cars lined up all the time. And it's just, a, it's, it's unattractive. I think it's a safety hazard. And, and again, I, I don't understand why you're spending all this energy to undo something you spent all this energy to do and got a lot of feedback on, a lot of public input on, and now you're going to undo it. Um, there seems to be an issue in this town with compliance. We seem to not want to invest into having people comply with the things we set up. And instead of investing in compliance, we decide to just undo them because it's easier, because there's loud voices in some room. I'm a loud voice, so I get that. Um, but, I, but I don't understand uh, this, uh, this idea that you're just now gonna spin it out and, and undo it. So I'm disappointed. Um, it, it may seem like that's one issue for me, but it's not. It's all the issues I just mentioned. And, and we're actively now, I, I, so we invested $25,000 earlier this year in our kitchen at a total re remake over. We were just now on the verge of probably investing another $50,000 to do new windows and new siding. That's all on hold uh, because if we're going to move, we're not going to invest that in this house in the West Side neighborhood. Um, we would rather take that money and put it into a property we buy somewhere else. So I just want to share that with you, explain my disappointment. I, I think you're, you're solving a problem that has already been solved to the best of our ability. And, and uh, I, I, I will leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is Dr. Brent Crane, followed by Kyle. Good evening. I would like to speak to the trash violation at 1110 Hickory. In my view, this fine is but part of a pattern of undue and disproportionate burden placed on the elderly, the suffering, and those least able to afford the fines or defend themselves against injustice. The policies in place fail to safeguard the livelihood of those under your protection as council members of this city. I was not afforded a fair appeal. Code compliance produced photos, statements, invoices, which I was not shown while they had access to everything I had submitted. In the court of law, both sides get to see the evidence. This unfair advantage made it impossible to adequately prepare a defense. In addition, the General Services Committee is made up entirely of city council members. I was quite frankly shocked to see the marked absence of any independent third party. This was a claim against the city, presided over entirely by those who make policy for the city. Does no one see the inherent conflict of interest? After my appeal, I located a copy of the full agenda. The trash authorization form on page 27 shows approval for three hours of work to remove the 10 yards of debris from my property. Yet the invoice shows 14 hours and 55 yards. Who approved this to go from three hours to 14? I see no documentation, nor was there anything close to 55 yards of debris. Furthermore, my contractor had already commenced cleanup the day prior. The following statement is from my contractor, quote, I was there starting to remove the debris from the house repairs at 3 p.m. on Monday. I left to remove the rest the next morning and almost everything was gone. It was going to take me five pickup loads at approximately $50 each. There was no way there was near that much trash that they stated removed. A very absorbent amount was charged to you, which I feel is very unfair, end quote. Ryan McGrain described the bidding process. There was one contractor who applied and hence no competitive bidding. There is also apparently no accountability beyond a gentleman's agreement. It is exactly this kind of irresponsible management that opens the door to fraud, which I suggest is happening on your watch. Scott Sanford indicated the city is writing 300 to 600 grass violations per week. Does no one think to ask why this systemic problem exists? How many of these fines are laid upon the elderly? How many on those unable to afford a mower, much less pay someone to mow? How many on those suffering from loss, such as Mr. Bloomer, whose life fell apart when his fiance died, yet he was billed $435 to mow a yard anyone would have mowed for 60 bucks? Where is the support to those in need? 
Where was the city when I suffered the $15,000 tenant-induced loss to my property while fighting my way through graduate school and trying to provide for my kids? The city was there only to slap on the red tag and bury me under fees and lacked even the decency to return my emails and phone calls. And just how much income does the city generate from this? I don't know, what is it, 50 to 100,000 a week in fees? I don't know. There is no incentive for the city to come up with a company. Is that the end of it? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Clark, you're on mute. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kyle, followed by Rachel Diskin. Go ahead, Kyle. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right, uh, thank you all for being here. The, um, I'm here to discuss the parking situation. Um, I was unfamiliar with it, and so I did a little uh, Googling, and I found a Lansing State Journal article here uh, from December 2019. Lansing will require residents to buy permits for overnight street parking. Um, I gave it a read. I, a read. I do want to give a quick appreciation to Councilman Jackson for this quote here. My issue is with the unfettered discretion of the parking manager. I agree with you. I think that uh, it feels like a self-insulated system, um, and I do appreciate uh, uh, your move to try to lower the fees. Um, I agree with Loretta that uh, departments and landlords should provide permits. Uh, I think that uh, if they don't, this is a tax to live in the city. Um, the, and I agree with Loretta also that um, winter emergencies, you know, we can make exceptions. We live in Michigan. The um, things are going to happen with that. Uh, but my main concern, I guess, is towards the end of this article, I've got a quote here from Mary Andy Shore. Uh, many people want the ability to park overnight throughout Lansing. Fair, understandable. While others have concerns about possible congestion on our street. I guess, who are these others? And by congestion on our streets, do you mean it looks like people actually live here? The, um, you know, this ordinance passed today is a compromise. It, it may have been a compromise, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still a tax on the people of Lansing. Um, and I, I wholeheartedly disagree with uh, this idea and would advocate for either a repeal or a partial repeal that would have uh, landlords and apartment complexes foot the bill. And I'll see the rest of my time. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Rachel Diskin, followed by someone whose phone number ends with 4371. Go ahead, Rachel. Thank you all for being here today and for letting me speak. Um, I'm also here to talk about the parking ordinance. Um, I see the ordinance as something that's not equitable and puts a disproportionate burden on renters um, and those with lower incomes in the city of Lansing. And moreover, it just doesn't accomplish the goal. Um, you know, the goal I think for everyone is to allow for safe transportation of public vehicles, like ambulance and snow plows. Um, and the parking ordinance, ordinance really doesn't address that. I think like hypothetically in the ideal world, what we'd wanna see with this ordinance, right, is that everyone who needs a parking permit purchases a parking permit, pays the city, voila, everyone's parking legally on the street. But in real, real life, it, that would just, the street would be just as crowded as it was before. Like we're not actually addressing the issue um, by creating this permit situation. So, um, you know, I think the better way to address this is to look at it um, as other communities have with like single side street parking, where you just never are able to park on the left side of the street. You park on the right side of the street and anyone parked on the left gets towed, ticketed, whatnot. Um, I've loved places that do that. It's very simple. And I've never encountered a city that had this um, no parking from five, two to five or whatnot um, until I came to Lansing and got a ticket and I didn't realize it existed. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't think that that's very equitable either. And I think that there's definitely ways for us to do this that doesn't involve this parking permit system um, and allows for people to be able to um, park on a single side. And, you know, I think it's completely understandable to have emergency situations where nobody can park on the street. Um, but, and then last but not least, if we're gonna keep doing this parking permit system, we've got to fix it so that people can actually purchase one online. It is absurd. I live on the east side and I went to go purchase one because 
I wanted to do the right thing. And I'm like, I have to put a copy of my like mortgage of my house and a copy of my driver's license. Like it was, it was a huge hassle and I wasn't willing to do it. So, um, if I wasn't, then other people won't be either. Uh, so I guess those are my, those are my points and I see the rest of my time. Thank you. Um, next is uh, phone number ending in 4371. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, if you could uh, identify yourself, that would be great. And then followed by propaganda. Phone number 4371, are you there? Mr. Cook, why don't we move on and then come back if this person. Um, uh, okay, next is Propagandi, uh, who I think is Michael Lynn, followed by um, Margaret Olson. Michael? I am here. Thank you for recognizing uh, our hashtag of Propagandi and recognizing it being me. Um, this issue of the parking seems very simple to me and to anybody that lives in a lower income house or in a lower income area. And what it sounds like, like our Cole, who just spoke first uh, from the West Side neighborhood, um, unfortunately what he's expressing, his disdain with this and other things in his neighborhood is not this parking issue. It's more or less that gentrification didn't work in the West Side neighborhood and people are buying houses there and they are renting them out to people who you may not want to live next to. That sounds like the issue there. Um, he expressed non-compliance as being the issue why people bring these type of things. And for somebody who's putting $25,000 into a new kitchen renovation and $50,000 more into his house to renovate, he can see it as non-compliance because he can afford to pay a ticket every day if need be when his family comes through for Thanksgiving dinner or whatever the case is, and they don't have the time to get, uh, you know, permits for those parking or whatever. But I think it's important for somebody like himself to understand that non-compliance isn't always a decision. Sometimes it's the only option. And I think that's the biggest problem that we have in Lansing is people don't pay attention to have empathy for anybody outside of their own situation. Um, other things that have been stated is, putting this on landlords and whatnot, that'll no doubtedly end up on a tenant's hands if it's put on a landlord. They're just gonna end up putting it on your rent. They're gonna add it to something the same way they do as trash or a dog fee or whatever those cases are. So let's not even think about that as being an option if we're really talking about helping the people that can't afford to pay these tickets. Um, also, we, I think we all know if anybody follows the West Side neighborhood, who called and had a whole street ticketed. It sounds like it was our coal over the last week. And that shouldn't be an option that people can do um, to punish people who have no option or choice than to park on the street. Um, crowding the streets was never the issue. And the reason why it's two to five in the morning being that I'm a Lansing resident and I've been here driving for over 20 years it was always because of snow removal and that's what time they do it. And that's what time they street sweep the streets. So why is it not that there's just a special time to do that? And why is it not that during snow removal days or when there's a heavy snow, then we all understand the ordinance means that you can't park in the street during that day. Just like you can't have a fire burning on a very windy day. There's days that you can't burn and so on and so forth. So this doesn't seem to be uh, the end all situation that we got to really think that hard on y'all just make this happen, man. And Andy, go ahead and get up out of here. My guy. Thank you. Um, next we have Margaret Alston and then John. Go ahead, Margaret. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I, um, I just want to express my, um, opposition to eliminating the um, prohibition on of street parking. Ironically, I, I've been living in my neighborhood for about 37 years, which is a Tammany Hill subdivision. And ironically, I just called my um, council person, like, well, didn't call, but I wrote an email for a lot of concerns. And one of them being how all these vehicles are just parked on 
you know, on the streets overnight. And I was wondering if they were still ordinance. And then he let me know, well, interesting you would bring that up because they're having a hearing. And I guess there's some people that want that law of God, that ordinance to be eliminated. Well, for me, I, I think, um, I don't want to feel like I live in Chicago. And um, I would like to maybe echo some of the concerns that Loretta said earlier when she was making her presentation. Um, I think it's an ordinance that needs to be enforced. I don't know if it's a matter of you guys short on staff, which is, I don't know the history of why people want to eliminate it, but um, city, they need to have a person to go around and ticket people. Or if, if it's a matter of them getting a permit, then they should get a permit. Um, it's just like me having to pay to drive. So I don't know why we don't want to keep our streets clean here. I don't like the clutter. Too many cars on the street. I think that, and then to expect somebody when the snow comes that they're going to do the right thing. I don't think it works like that. Why would they do the right thing? They haven't been doing it now. Even with a law. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, I'm going to remind you to take yourself off mute, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, John, uh, go ahead and then followed by, John is followed by Galaxy S10E. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, regarding the parking, um, I have, uh, have roommates that I rent extra rooms out to. Um, the, the fee would go to them, I will be frank. I have a lot of bills to pay. I take great pride in keeping up my place and uh, making sure that they've got a safe, comfortable, clean place to live in that is well maintained and up to city code. And it's there's a lot of expenses there. Uh, utilities aren't cheap, et cetera. Uh, we gotta pay for permitted parking. I'm, I'm afraid that it'll be my roommates that are gonna have to pay for that. Um, I. I Definitely, it, it is frustrating when you drive down a street and there are cars everywhere. I would second the other citizens uh, idea of possibly only parking on one side of the street, either, you know, only the north side or west or east sides of streets, for example, um, and having proper signage and, and curb painting to uh, enforce that, you know. Um, if there are problems where people are parking in front of driveways, et cetera, just enforce what, what's already on the books. We have, uh, we have laws and regulations that cover those sorts of things. So if, if code enforcement is the issue, just get people out there to, to write the tickets that are gonna be tickets regardless of time of, of day. So definitely uh, support this, but maybe the council needs to relook the exact wording and what the outcomes uh, of repealing this would be. Thank you. Thank you. And then our final speaker that signed in uh, before we uh, close sign up is Galaxy S10E. Go ahead, Galaxy. Hello, my name is Brittany. Um, I just want to say that the parking ordinance is doing what it's supposed to. I am a younger resident and when I first lived on the east side, I got my first no parking two to five. Um, ever since then, I found some other way to park. It, the people don't move their cars during the winter. And I work in the city and I've seen the, the snow plows struggle to get through the city streets. And then I've seen the same residents that are parked on the streets complain that they can't, they're, they're not plowing the streets. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. Let's blame the city. Why are we paying taxes? It, we're, we're paying taxes so we can plow the streets. We have this ordinance so we can have the cars off the streets. And currently, we just, we have too many cars on the streets. Right now, they're able to identify these cars that have been sitting on the streets for months with no tag, covered VIN numbers, dust all over them, and they're able to get those cars off the streets for once. Before, they weren't able to do that. Um, plus, when you take away this ordinance, you're taking away jobs. We've hired four people to do this job. And when you take away this ordinance, they're not going to have jobs anymore. 
Um, that's, that's my spiel. Have a good one. Okay, thank you. And we are to the referral of the public hearings. Mr. Cook, before we do that, the phone number that wished to try and make some public comment, can we just double check that that person does not still wish to comment? Wasn't it, uh, was it three? I don't see that phone number on here. Okay, very good. Then we'll move on. I, I apologize. I not see the same phone number. Um, just wanted to make sure we were yep. leaving it open. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we have number one, the uh, ordinance to eliminate the prohibition on on street parking. Uh, that'll go to the Community of Public Service. Uh, we have the ordinance to eliminate the permits for overnight parking. Public service. Uh, the ordinance to regulate uh, parking during snow emergencies. Uh, public service. And the um, transfer of property to the Lansing Housing Commission. Committee Hall. Okay, then we are to the consent agenda. Mr. Vice President, uh, Council Member Dunbar. Thank you. Uh, this is this. I was trying to get to my um, unmute button just to comment at the end of the speakers, and I, there was two things I wanted to say. Um, one, someone mentioned um, that the city would lose a lot of money if we stop um, this ordinance and I just I want to say I personally don't believe in that we create any ordinance for the purpose of making money I certainly wouldn't support that so um, it's it's for other reasons but the second one was the there was a speaker who mentioned cars on the road that um, were not drivable didn't have tags we have an we have other laws that um, allow folks to take to, to get those cars off the road. Our, our cars, they have to be licensed and drivable. So if anybody sees that, that's a completely different issue. It's not a two to 5 a.m. parking issue. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that folks know that there is an avenue to take care of that. Thank you, Council Member Dunbar. Mr. Vice President. Sure, so uh, I would, um, first let me list the items on the consent agenda and then I'll move to consent agenda. Consent agenda tonight includes uh, 1A, setting up a public hearing consideration of a uh, noise special permit. Uh, Hoffman Brothers Inc. requests to allow for work on Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. for the period of uh, September 19th to October 19th, 2020 uh, for the Willard Avenue pump station and sanitary, uh, sanitary force main rehabil rehabilitation project. Sorry, uh, this is work that is necessary to support the new uh, McLaren uh, Hospital. Uh, and that public hearing would be September 14th. Um, B, 1B, claim disposition, appeal number 1781. This is for Brent claim for $4,000, I'm uh, sorry, $4,050 of trash removal fees at 1,110 Hickory Street. Uh, 1C, which is the claim disposition uh, number 1137. This is for Mr. John E. Blummer for $435 in grass and weed, uh, grass and weed fees at 725 North Pine Street. Um, also including the consent agenda um, is item 2A. This is a joint reappointment for Monica Johnner to the Ingham County City of Lansing Community Corrections Advisory Board. This would be for a term to expire September 17, 2023. Uh, and then also items 3A and B. 3A uh, is the acceptance of the payment asset management plan. And 3B is the traffic control order number 20-07. This is for the installation of stop signs at High Street and Cesar E. Chavez Avenue uh, intersection. Uh, so again, that is, uh, that consists, um, sorry, those are the items that are on the consent agenda and I would move the- Before you move it, Mr. Vice President, I just would like to remind folks, if you want something pulled, speak now for what will hold your peace. Otherwise, a no vote means we have to redo the consent agenda. So just to avoid that situation. Uh, Council Member Jackson. Thank you. I would just remove uh, letter B, claim dis disposition from the consent agenda, especially since Mr. Kane is here and spoke. Thank you. That is noted. Mr. Vice President, would you please move the altered consent agenda? Sure. So I would move the consent agenda with the removal of item 1B. Thank you. Um, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. On adoption of the consent agenda with the one deletion, Council Member Bats. Yes. Councilmember Dunbar. Yes. Councilmember Hussein. Yes. Councilmember Jackson. Yes. Councilmember Spadafore. Yes. Councilmember Spitzley. 
Yes. Council Member Wood. Yes. Uh, that is seven yeas, zero nays. So the consent agenda is adopted. So that takes us to the item that was pulled the claim disposition for appeal number uh, 1780. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice President. Sure. So uh, the General Services Committee, we had the claimant uh, into our General Services meeting on 8 August 25th. Uh, we also had uh, our lead housing inspector, Scott Sanford, into our meeting on August 25th uh, to discuss this appeal. Uh, we did hear from Mr. Scott Sanford. He explained to the committee uh, that this particular property um, is a long-term uh, red tag property. Uh, it was cited for uh, trash violation on 12-11-2019 uh, with compliance date of 12-18-2019. Um, in accordance with our uh, policies, the premise officer, uh, Mr. Breeder, re did recheck this property um, the next day, sort of in December 19th, uh, and found that all violations were uh, still present. Uh, therefore, the violations were submitted to our contractor, who is, in this case, Eric's Refuse. Uh, the contractor arrived on January uh, 7th after the holidays, uh, and the violations were still present, as indicated in the photos um, that, is, that are in your packet, uh, and a cleanup was uh, performed. As part of that cleanup, uh, there was a large pile of brush and tree limbs. Uh, there was clothing, paint, construction materials, old windows, uh, and the like, again, the, the pictures speak for themselves. Um, he also shared with us that this particular work site, uh, and again, you can see it in the pictures, was not being uh, maintained uh, in an orderly fashion. Uh, as an example, no dumpster or trailer um, had been placed at the property for the debris to be placed in. Um, with regards to this particular property, there's also a bit of a history uh, with violations. Um, in, in the last few years, there have been four grass violations. There's been a board up. Uh, there's been a trash violation. Uh, and the property, again, uh, as I had previous, previously mentioned, has been red tagged since April of 2015. Uh, so for those reasons, the code office uh, was recommending denial of the claim. Uh, in committee, we broke down the bill just a little bit, uh, Mr. Jackson. Uh, we found that $3,785 of the $4,050 um, uh, that was being contested is in contractor fees. and uh, $265 of that is administration fees um, and is actually payable to the city of Lansing. Um, in terms of the contractor fees, uh, when we break down that invoice, you see 14 hours of work uh, and you see about 55 cubic yards of waste that, that were removed. The claim is correct uh, in that the original authorization um, authorized three hours of work and 10 cubic yards of waste. However, in the correction notice, um, it did state clearly um, that if the contractor arrives and if there are additional materials um, on, that, uh, on the property, um, that those two will be removed. Um, I asked the lead housing inspector as part of uh, the appellate process in the General Services Committee um, whether, not, whether or not pre-authorization was sought, uh, and he um, uh, confirmed that pre-authorization was, in fact, sought by Mr. Uh, Breeder, who was the premise inspector in this case. Um, also, if you look at the pictures that are part of the packet, uh, also those pictures were uploaded um, the week before um, onto the city's website uh, in the Agenda Center, um, the, the week before um, our hearing. If you look, there are six pictures um, that do show the truck as empty um, and then full. Uh, if you note the date time stamps on them, it shows that uh, Eric's Refuse was on site all day. Um, you also um, should know that Eric's, it, it was explained to us that Eric's trucks, they don't have the standard eight by eight or eight by 10 uh, flatbed. They actually have an eight by 16. Um, that hold approximately 18 to 20 cubic yards of waste. And so uh, even at the minimum of 18 cubic yards, if you look at the pictures, um, that would amount to about 54 cubic yards of, of waste that was in fact removed that day. Um, again, uh, the amount billed, uh, Mr. Jackson, is what the city was billed uh, based on reauthorization uh, and the provisions of the contract that we have in place with Eric's Refuse. Um, it, you know, we also found um, that the work site was not being maintained in an orderly fashion um, and, and that that dumpster or trailer should have been placed at the property for the debris to be uh, placed. And so in terms of the committee's decision, um, we did deny this claim in full um, due to the uh, reauthorization, the work that was uh, actually done, the amount the city was billed for, uh, and the notice, notification process being followed uh, with fidelity. So with that being said, I would move uh, the resolution to deny uh, this claim in the amount of $4,050. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. That is a proper motion. Is there anyone wishing to make comment on this resolution? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? On adopting the claim denial, Council Member Betts. Yes. Council Member Dunbar. Yes. Council Member Hussein. Yes. 
Councilmember Jackson. No. That was a no. Correct. That was a no. From me is a yes. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Spitzley. Yes. Councilmember Wood. Yes. Six yeas, one nay. The resolution is adopted. And that takes us to resolutions by the Committee on Public Services. And we have the snow and ice assessment. Councilmember Dunbar, we're from your committee, please. Okay, that, I'm never gonna get this right. Um, all right, so um, this is the role for snow and ice assessment um, ad adoption. Are we? Councilmember, you muted yourself. Okay, I did not realize I did that. We heard it was the role for snow and ice and that was it. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm, um, we've, uh, hold on a second. I'm feeling like I'm gonna faint. Oh Lord. Would you like me to handle this one, council member? Do we yeah. need to call somebody? Is, is, uh, is Dom there? Um, yeah, he's outside. I yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, here. I'm gonna get off camera. Yep, please do. Um, just, just a minute, folks. Okay, um, I have alerted uh, Councilmember Dunbar's significant other that there may be an issue. Um, not, I wasn't playing Candy Crush. Um, so the- Yes, you were. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, if I could turn the gavel over to you, please, and then uh, if I could address this issue. Yep, thank you. I, I, uh, so what we have in front of us is the snow and ice assessment for the city of Lansing. So this, uh, for the, this winter, every year, as, as many of you know, we go through um, a assessment process with snow and ice, so if residents, get through um, the, the, the notification period after a certain period of time and they don't, they don't take care of their snow and ice, we, we notice them and then we come back and take care of the snow and ice for them and charge them fix, a fixed fee, uh, which is, I believe, base $149. That's the, the, the minimum to send somebody out to take care of it after several periods of notification. Um, the, this year was a relatively light winter, so we only had $3,777 worth of um, snow and ice removal uh, and we had two folks appeal their snow and ice removal and they were both denied by the committee uh, so this role is now before us um, for work that was performed by city contractors and um, we I would move the role and we need to get it on the, the taxes unfortunately um, I think I mentioned this before or we've mentioned it before Usually we like to get this on the summer taxes uh, so that folks are not confused by its presence, um, but it is, it's gonna end up on the winter taxes because of COVID this year. It just it, one of those things that didn't get, um, get, get processed quickly enough and with tax being delayed and whatnot. So it will be on the winter taxes, but it will be for last winter's snow and ice removal. So I move the resolution or I move the roll. Thank you, President Spadafore. There is a motion on the table. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, clerks, will you take the roll, please? Okay. Um, on the snow and ice roll, Council Member Betts. Yes. Uh, Council Member Dunbar, are you back with us? He is not, no. Okay. Council Member Hussein. Yes. Council Member Jackson. Yes. Council Member Spadafore. Yes. Council Member Spitzley. Yes. Council Member Wood. Yes. Six yeas, zero nays, the resolution is adopted and that takes us to the uh, Glenburn Commons uh, uh, assessment. President Spadafore, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. So this is now the special assessment for the Glenburn Commons trash and grass abatement. Um, we've all gone through the history of the treasurer running away with the spoon and the bag of money and the president of the condo association there many, many years ago. Um, in fact, we're going to do a dramatic interpretation of it at next year, but 
Um, what it is, it's a, it's a condominiumized uh, public space in, a, in the Glenburn, co uh, Glenburn subdivision and uh, we, it needs to be taken care of. So the residents petitioned the city a few years back, I believe 2016, uh, uh, to set up the special assessment district. That special assessment district is for the purposes of taking care of the lawn. There was very little trash um, this year. So uh, the average uh, summer maintenance for that per, per property was $53.97. There were, I believe, as with the last one, two appeals. Both were denied. This is a it's not a tax. It's not a unfair assessment. This is written right into their their deed, and it's on their their taxes. So, um, with that, I will move the special assessment roll. All right. There is a motion on the table. Is there any discussion? A uh, quick question, Being, Brian's. Sure, uh, Brian, go ahead. Brian's camera isn't on. Is that a problem with uh, having quorum, or are we okay? Oh, he's back. He oh. is back on. <laughs> All right, we, get we appreciate it. you rejoining us. Mr. Jackson. All right, seeing no uh, discussion, Clerk Swope, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Betts. Yes. Uh, Councilmember Hussein. Yes. Councilmember Jackson. Yes. Councilmember Spadafore. Yes. Councilmember Spitzley. Yes. Councilmember Wood. Yes. Six yeas, zero nays. Uh, the Resolution is adopted and that takes us to the Committee on Ways and Means uh, for the grant acceptance for the uh, recovery resource developer. Thank you, Council Member Wood. Um, thank you. The uh, grant acceptance that we have for you is the Economic Development Resource, um, Economic Recovery Resource Development uh, Grant. And, uh, what this does is in coordination with our Lansing EDC, um, we would be hiring a contract physician for $100,000. This is a one-time um, expense. What this person would be doing is because of um, COVID, um, it was determined that we needed to have someone that would um, be willing to do the following purposes uh, to um, uh, commence and provide benefits to, um, no, I'm sorry, that's the city's responsibility, that um, would be networking with businesses to identify and better understand immediate and long-term needs, um, that they would um, identify funding sources and potential partners to coordinate for fundraising efforts, um, building and uh, tapping into a network of businesses uh, that they, this would include minority owned businesses and other disproportionate uh, impacted groups, creating linkage between various um, funding opportunities and qualified local applicants who can apply for those funds, fostering um, mutual benefit, benefit, beneficial, excuse me, relationships and uh, current future partners at the locals, uh, federal and uh, communicating with building relationships with the private industry and potential funders. Um, there is admin money that is part of the Lansing Economic, um, uh, Lansing EDC that would allow us to utilize these uh, one-time funds. Now, the goal is, is that hopefully it would accomplish what it's supposed to bring more money into EDC and the potential of having this contractor position um, go on longer than that. But um, this, as I said, is the money that they have available at this time. It's only um, for a one-time um, uh, uh, grant proposition with them. And um, they have already done an RFP uh, that's been released. They will be, uh, they were supposed to have gotten that to us. That we, as of 5.30, I did not see the RFP um, there. 
we'll make sure that council members do get a copy of that. Um, with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. And I believe we have uh, Mr. McGrain here as well, um, who is the director that oversees the um, EDC. And I see Patricia's hand is up. So um, I'll turn it back over to the president. <laughs> I thought I was wondering how far you're going to take that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Council Member Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Member Wood. Um, so I, I have a couple questions. Um, the grant is a one-time grant. Yes. Um, I mean, so after we hire this 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 coordinator, we would be a contract position. Yeah, we would be hoping for additional funds to support the contract, but that person would not be an employee of the city of Lansing over the contract. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. This could be, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. McGrain, this could be an individual or a firm. Um, so that that has not been determined yet. It will be part of the selection process. The one question I, I didn't ask you, Mr. McGrain, and maybe you can um, give us the information now is, who will be making the selection and what criteria will they be using to make that selection? Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Councilman Wood, Councilmember Wood. Um, and I realize as I'm nodding my head aggressively over here, I probably need to say things like yes for the record. So um, yes, this will be a contract position. Um, and to an earlier question, you know, we're giving this one year. Um, we need this to be results oriented. And if it's not demonstrating results in a year, we're certainly not gonna look for it's, it's re-upping. Um, we do have the RFP live. My apologies if you didn't receive that. I do believe I supplied that to Sherry uh, the evening of your last committee meeting, um, but I can resend that to make sure you have it. That RFP is live right now. Um, it does close, I believe, September 15th, um, at which point we will be reviewing uh, those proposals. Um, could be an individual, could be a, um, a company, um, but certainly we've asked for that proposal to give us um, the majority of one person's time to be that contractor. Um, we will have a panel reviewing. That panel will include myself, uh, we believe somebody from LEAP will probably have somebody from the Community Foundation involved. Um, it'll be folks like that. I imagine that it's going to be a panel of three to five uh, reviewers. And just for the record, that, that RFP did come uh, Friday and Sherry just sent it to you too. Okay. And, and I was just going to say we might have gotten it um, with the number of emails and the different things that might have gotten lost in that. But um, thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, uh, Patricia, your hand is up, but I assume that's residual, so I'm going to lower that. Um, you've moved it. Is there any discuss any further discussion? Mr. McGrain, thank you for your time. Um, Clerk, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. On accepting uh, on the grant resolution, Council Member Betts. Yes. Council Member Hussein. Yes. Council Member Jackson. Yes. Councilmember Spadafor. Yes. Councilmember Spitzley. Yes. Councilmember Wood. Yes. Six yeas, zero nays. The resolution is adopted, so we are to the uh, hazard pay and acceptance. Uh, Councilmember Wood. Uh, thank you, President Spadafor. This is the first response responders hazardous pay prevention program. Um, this is through um, the Michigan um, Treasury um, Department that that application has gone in um, to. Um, the amount that we would be receiving is um, $381,000. This would represent um, a one-time um, check for hazardous pay for first-time responders. The grant, um, again, as I said, would be $1,000 and it would go to law enforcement officers, firefighters, EMTs, paramedic and corrections officers. Um, this would not uh, be added into um, their retirement um, calculations um, and the city would be responsible for paying FICA and uh, Medicare. Um, and I believe that um, 
and is um, all the information along with the fact that they've not released those funds yet. It is part of the process that the state is working on. So with that, um, I would um, move this uh, grant acceptance. Thank you, it has been moved. Is there further discussion? I'll just point out, it confused me a little bit too, but we have to get it approved this fiscal year. Yes. Uh, the state's fiscal year and our, it's because they, they expect to release it, but haven't yet, so. Um, I see no other discussion um, looking at the list here. So uh, Mr. Cook, would you please call the roll? Certainly council member Betts. Yes. Council member Hussein. Yes. Council member Jackson. Yes. Council member Spadafore. Yes. Council member Spitzley. She's, she's aggressively nodding yes and thumbs up. <laughs> uh, Council member Wood. Yes. Okay, six yeas, zero nays, the resolution is adopted. That takes us to the Committee of the Whole uh, for Public Improvement. Uh, no, that one's uh, for Public Act 425, uh, three agreements. Sure, I'll have the Vice President address all three of this at once. We will have to vote them separately, but Mr. Vice President, if you could, I think the, the details remain the same regardless of the property. Sure, so uh, we received quite the history lesson as part of Committee of the Whole. Uh, that was courtesy of Ms. Samantha Harkins as well as uh, Mr. Jim Smirka. Uh, during Committee of the Whole, we learned that we have, among other 425 agreements, we have in place three 425 agreements with um, Delta Township, uh, and they all expire at the end of this year. Uh, Mr. Smirka explained to us that um, Act 425 is authorized by Public Act uh, 425, I believe it is, of 1983, um, if I'm correct, enable essentially two local units of government uh, to conditionally transfer property uh, by written agreement for the purpose of really um, executing economic development projects. So these types of land transactions, I think is what he called it, the land transaction. Um, he said that they run short of an annexation uh, and they are at times needed to support uh, proposed uh, projects on property that, uh, as an example, lack necessary infrastructure, you think of utilities, um, or um, uh, in a situation you know, where uh, maybe economic incentives need to be taken advantage of when only one of uh, the, uh, I should say the entities within this particular agreement um, actually have access to first state statute. Uh, and as an example, um, that would be your industrial uh, facilities tax exemptions. Uh, in any event, um, back in 2005, the city and uh, Delta Township did execute three of these agreements. Um, and again, they expire at the end of the year. Um, our understanding is that we began negotiations on renewal um, at some point last year. Uh, we've ultimately settled on the terms of those renewals. Um, considering uh, tax share percentages um, that were shared with us, the current agreements in place uh, call for a splitting of property tax um, revenue, income tax revenue, and I believe it was administrative uh, fees at a 60-40 uh, percentage or, or a rate uh, with Delta receiving 60%. Uh, if approved by this council, uh, the amended agreements would change the income tax split uh, to a 50-50 share, uh, and the city of Lansing would receive 100% of the administrative fees. Um, we did work to negotiate a 50-50 split um, for the property tax, uh, but Delta uh, arguing that they do provide police and they do provide fire, uh, and they upkeep the infrastructure and things of that nature, um, they argued that it should remain at 60-40. Ultimately, we uh, concurred. Uh, so as of now, it was explained to us as well um, that we receive about $33,000 annually from these three agreements. Um, over the past 15 years, we've received some $495,000, um, but annually that number is certain to go up if, if these are approved. Uh, the Delta uh, Township Board of Trustees did in fact uh, approve these agreements already. Uh, and if approved, the new agreements would expire 15 years, I believe it's 2035. Uh, so with that being said, um, I would move uh, Public Act 425 agreement uh, renewal. This was, is for Delta Township. Andro Android Industries, it was explained that this last piece is listed for reference, uh, but in the actual resolution and agreement, you actually have a legal definition of the, of the land that's actually um, um, uh, referenced. So with that being said, I'd move Public Act 425 agreement renewal. Hey. Very good. Um, so we've got that item in front of us. Is there any further discussion from council members? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Okay, uh, Council Member Betts. Yes. Council Member Hussein. Yes. Council Member Jackson. 
Yes. Councilmember Spadafore. Yes. Councilmember Spitzley. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Councilmember Wood. Yes. 68 zero nays. The resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Mr. Vice President, the second one, if you would, please. Sure. I would move Public Act 40, uh, 425 Agreement Renewal Delta Township uh, and Bridgewater Interiors LLC. Thank you. The motion has been made. Mr. Uh, any further discussion? Ms. Kirk, please call the roll. Councilmember Betts. Yes. Councilmember Hussein. Yes. Councilmember Jackson. Yes. Councilmember Spadafore. Yes. Councilmember Spitzley. Yes. Councilmember Wood. Yes. Six yeas, zero nays, that resolution is adopted. Thank you. Third one, Mr. Vice President. I would move Public Act 425 Agreement Renewal, Delta Township, Stir Lansing, LLC. Thank you. It's been moved. Is there any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Councilmember Vets. Yes. Councilmember Hussein. Yes. Councilmember Jackson. Yes. Councilmember Spadafore. Yes. Councilmember Spitzley. Yes. Councilmember Wood. Yes. Six J's, zero nays. The um, resolution is adopted. And that takes us to speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. So again, um, please go ahead and give raising your hand. Um, and we will close the sign in after the first speaker. Um, and in the meantime, uh, we are to reports of city officers, boards, and commission. Sure, Mr. Vice President, please. Sure, President Spadafore, I'd move that all items be considered as read in full and that the proper referrals be made by you. Thank you, that's a proper motion. Is there any discussion on that motion? Um, oh no, that's public comment. <laughs> it's like Melina Brand would like to, no, that's not gonna work out. <laughs> so, sorry, I was looking at the wrong list. Uh, no con, no further discussion. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Betts. Yes. Councilmember Hussein. Yes. Councilmember Jackson. Yes. Councilmember Spisley. Yes. Councilmember Wood. Yes. Six J's, zero nays, that motion carries. So we have letters from the city clerk regarding minutes of boards and authorities. Place those on file, please. And a letter from the mayor regarding the annual action plan, substantial agreement, second allocation of CARES Act funds. Uh, this is uh, CDBG. We're going to put this committee to hold. Okay. And uh, communications and petitions. Uh, notice from the Liquor Control Commission of a penalty hearing uh, for Miko's Party Store. Me and General Services. And Mr. President. Oh yeah, sorry, Madam uh, That's Carol. Fine. <laughs> um, I would appreciate that the that item um, also be sent to the police department. Um, they are under a one month suspension. And so um, LPD, whether most of the time those things do filter into them, but they should be aware of that. Um, it it was mailed them. directly to them. They are carbon copied on the. Okay. Website. But just to make sure we've seen these things sometimes get lost. So if we can, you know, one more time sending it over, it would be great. Okay. Great. General services and then Sherry's paying attention. So she, she will make it so. Okay. Uh, Oh, and a affidavit of disclosure submitted by Wesley Lewis of the Board of Water and Light. That will go to the Ethics Board. And we are to motion of excuse absence. Yeah, I will entertain a motion to excuse Council Member Garza, and we're going to take the uh, uh, Council Member Dunbar uh, leaving the meeting as also an excused absence as well, please. So, Council Member Spitzley. I move to excuse both Council Member Garza and Council Member Dunbar from tonight's meetings. Thank you. And before we do that, um, I'd just like to let you know, I got a text message from Councilmember Dunbar's uh, family and she is resting and taking in some water. So she sounds like she'll be all right, but so. We're good. What? She's resting and haven't had a bit of, had a bit of water. <laughs> I don't think Chris knows what happened. 
Oh, uh, Councilmember Dunbar uh, left the meeting um, feeling faint. So. <laughs> all right. So let's call the, let's call the roll on the motion. I'm to not it. sure what happened, but I've lost all sound. Oh, I that's. Anything. I can't hear anyone. We can, oh, good. Uh, let's talk about him then. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> Hold on. I see that both he and Andy have put on the same shirt. We can hear you, Chris, just so you know. So don't say anything. Okay, I will assume that we are to public comment. <laughs> no, not yet. Uh, uh, <laughs> All right. Can you hear us now, Chris? We are to no. remarks by council members. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. No. Mm -mm. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm gonna call the roll on excusing members. Um, council member Wood. Yes. Council member Betts. Yes. Council member Spitzley. Yes. Council member Hussein. Yeah. Council member Jackson. Yes. Council member Spadafore. Yes. Motion carries. You better put that sign up again for something comes out. Yeah, I don't know how to get all of them. Sherry, can you call the clerk? <laughs> yes, I can. You loop them in that way. Maybe he can rejoin and unjoin you could just guess where we are right let's play a game <laughs> all right folks um we're gonna we can move on without the clerk i think um I'm certainly capable of handling it so we're gonna move on to um remarks by council members are there any council members that wish to make remarks council member wood thank you for offering to kill some time thank you um this question is for the mayor um, I know that when the first presentation came out um, by Councilmember Betts on the um, elimination of the two to five parking, it was indicated um, that you and he had worked on um, this ordinance. And um, my question to you is, um, knowing that you had worked with the Public Safety Committee um, during uh, the, as, as we were looking at passing this some time ago um, and came up with different compromises to make that so, I'd like to know your opinion on the um, ordinance that's before uh, the Council for Consideration and whether sure. you did work on it with him. Sure. Um, well, when we came, oh, Mr. President, if I can, uh, thank you. Um, when we came in uh, to office, um, we worked with council, uh, I believe, Councilmember Wood and Garza and uh, who was Hussein. Uh, I forget who the third person was on. on uh, but we worked with you, you to make sure that we had a system where we could enforce. The request was we would like it to be enforced and said, okay, if we're going to enforce, we have to. Um, use parking instead of police and uh, and it needs to be funded for the positions and that's where we came up with the system we have now which um, which I thought was a, um, a good compromise um, it was a system where people who you know we it's a 50 50 split right now in the city uh, or so when we pulled it uh, I don't know a year and a half ago on who wants to allow for overnight parking and who doesn't um, so we said all right this is a good compromise um, and I was comfortable with that when it passed uh, at the end of last year, uh, when council passed that. Um, since that time, uh, council member Betts came in and, and we've heard public comments and um, he indicated uh, an interest in, in repealing the, the two to five. And, and we had a conversation and said, if we're gonna repeal the, the two to five, then um, you know, we need to maintain snow uh, ability to, to clear snow and, and to, um, to make sure that we have abandoned cars that can be taken off the road. So we did work together on that, on that language. He was very receptive um, to what our public service raised in terms of if we were to get rid of the ordinance entirely, um, some of the pieces that, that really needed to, to either be replaced or still needed to be there. Um, so we did work together uh, on his, um, his proposal that, that he was bringing forth to council. Um, Councilmember Betts, I defer to you if I if I missed anything there. 
But uh, I think those are the conversations we had, um, I don't know, earlier in the year. All right, thank you. You've answered my question. Mr. Clerk, are you back with us? I am back and I can hear you. Okay, well, let me just double check that there's no other council comments before we move on. I don't see any hands and I don't see anyone frantically trying to attract my attention. So we are going to move on to remarks by the mayor. Mr. Mayor, anything to add this evening? Nope, all set, excellent. Mr. Clerk, um, okay. please remind folks of the, we will shut it down after the first speaker. Thank you, yes. We are to public comment on city government related matters. You'll have up to three minutes. Um, and we, uh, you do need to raise your hand to be called on. And after the first speaker speaks, we will um, not accept any more raised hands after that. So right now I see four. Uh, the first speaker is Loretta Stanaway, followed by Melina Brand. And after Loretta is done speaking, uh, there will be no more uh, recognized if you haven't already raised your hand. So go ahead, Loretta. Well, again, on the parking issue, um, I'm very aware that there are people who are in dire financial conditions and a $125 a year parking permit would be very difficult for them, which is why I make the recommendation that the uh, landlord have to cover that cost. And then again, the point is raised, well, then the landlord is going to just increase the rents. But I think, and I'm not absolutely certain how all of the Section 8 stuff works, but I think for those renters who are in the lowest of the income tiers who do the Section 8 rentals, the landlord can weave that additional cost into whatever other costs he or she um, tabulates when they set the rent and then submit that rent reimbursement to whichever state or federal agency uh, covers it. So it would not necessarily be a financial deficit to the lowest income tier renters if the landlords can build that into the charges that they send in for sec Section 8 reimbursement. So that's just a, a consideration. Thank you. And thank you. So uh, the sign up is now closed and the next speaker is Melina Brand followed by Rachel Diskin. Go ahead, Melina. Hello, um, I'm sorry I missed the what's comment earlier, um, but I'm here to speak in support of removing the parking ordinance. Um, and to Loretta's point, not all low income people are use section eight. Uh, there's a lot of uh, other people who need to live and do not, cannot get Section 8. Anyway, um, as many of you know, the ordinance disproportionately affects renters and people with low incomes. We know that a lot of Lansing was built before families had multiple cars, and there is a literal lack of space for parking in driveways, especially on the east side um, and probably on the west side, too. Um, all of the people who are opposed to, remo to removing this uh, clearly don't care they only care about their personal comfort and they don't care about their neighbors, specifically their low income neighbors. And it's really sad to see people blatantly disregard a whole group of people like this. It kind of comes off like a, another issue that we're all dealing with. Um, and I know a lot of you care about your constituents and in this instance, it's your most at risk constituents who are negatively impacted by this ordinance. And I know this just went to committee, but please vote to repeal this parking ordinance. I honestly believe that if you vote to keep this, then you don't care about people with low incomes. Thank you, I yield my time. Thank you, and next is Rachel Diskin followed by Kyle. Hello, this is Rachel Diskin. I live on the east side um, and I just wanted to speak again to remind us all that both the city of Lansing and Ingham County and the state of Michigan, so all three have declared racism a public health crisis. And to me, that means we need to be looking at every single thing we do with an eye to equity and racial equity, social justice, et cetera. Um, and you know, there's so many pieces that touch that, that we've talked about tonight, including the parking ordinance, which I already mentioned, so I'm not gonna talk about that again. I think Melina did a really good job of explaining that. Um, but then I also think that this grant to hire the, um, that we got for $100,000 to hire somebody to work with small businesses is such a great opportunity, but who's going to be deciding 
who that $100,000 goes to. Who's the review panel? When that question was asked earlier, there wasn't really a clear answer. It was like me and then maybe somebody from the foundation and somebody from LEAP. Okay, who are those people who are gonna be reviewing the applications to make sure that the stated intent of making sure that our black community that was disproportionately affected by COVID-19, that they are helped, that we're raising the bar, that we're looking at this in an equity way. So, you know, I think it's just important that, you know, we're, it's important to me that you and the city are looking at everything in an, with an equity lens. And like, just for an example, I just spent this whole time between the time that Brian McRae was speaking and now trying to find the RFP for that position. I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find it in the city of Lansing's email that went out last week, like the neighborhood news. Couldn't find it on Facebook, couldn't find it on the jobs page, couldn't find it on Leap's job page. Um, I Googled the exact name that's in the, or or in the um, proposal and I couldn't find it. If I can't find it, how are we gonna make sure that a black person is able to apply for this position to help their community? We wanna be raising people up and so things as easy as just making sure that we're equitable with hiring and being purposeful about making sure everyone has their eyes on it will go such a long way. Um, and so that's really all I have to say, but just please, please be sure that everything we're looking at with an eye to equity because it is a health crisis and defund the police. I cede my time. Um, thank you. Next we have Kyle, followed by uh, Propagandy Michael Lynn. Kyle? I'm here. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Uh, hello again. I um, Quick note with regards to the parking. Um, what Michael Lynn said about landlords passing the buck, uh, I, I retract my original statements. And I agree with him on that. The, um, and I want to make note of the people who were talking, you know, in favor of keeping the ordinance. There was this survivor bias. There was this, I did it, why can't you mentality. Um, there was, and there was this sense of like, oh, I'm uncomfy. Okay, sorry that you're uncomfy. Like if you don't want to live in a community with people, you know, if there's like, if in a community with people, there's, there's going to be noise sometimes. There's going to be cars in the street sometimes. Like, can we just chill a little bit? The, um, and then, so I, that's, um, that's all I have for the parking. Um, my other comments, uh, Mayor, Mayor Shore, I, um, I don't know you. I don't, uh, I don't really know the history of everything that's going on. Um, but what I do know is uh, about a, a fundraising email that got sent out and in it, you, there's a specific line that I, I guess I'm just confused by because you say they seek to tear down Lansing's progress to take advantage of the tough situation we're in. And, you know, there's obviously backlash around the use of they. Um, and I think that, you know, it's, I think it's fair to say that, hey, this, this could totally be, you know, racism. I think it's at the very least otherism. It's saying these people are not part of the Lansing community. I'm part of the Lansing community. And so it's, it's sort of like not, you're not representing all of the people of Lansing when you say things like this. The, and I get that, you, you know, it sounds like you were trying to, oh, I was talking about the mayoral elections. Well, as far as I know, no one's running against you. And so there is no they there either. Um, and then I guess the other word that I struggle with is progress. Um, they seek to tear down Lansing's progress. I, I feel like what tear down Lansing's progress was, you know, we, we, you know, we spent all of our time, money, and energy trying to revitalize downtown and do all this, all these downtown initiatives. And then of no fault of anybody, global pandemic happened and downtown is a ghost town now. And so that money's down the drain. The, um, and so I guess that's a little frustrating that when something, it's a freak, freak thing like a, a coronavirus, you know, that damages our community is then going to be blamed on people who are actually standing up to fight for racial justice and equity and equality, um, rather than just talk about it. Um, and so I would just ask that, you know, you really think about who you represent in this position and who you want to represent. Um, 
and maybe don't sound as, as divisive as uh, our current president does. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is uh, Propagandi, which I believe is Michael Lynn, followed by John. It's really funny that um, Kyle had mentioned Donald Trump and Andy Shore. I read an article earlier today where it said the Trump administration has effectively turned the law into a dead letter and following its basic principle that any law that lacks an effective and immediate enforcement mechanism essentially does not exist. And this is what we are basically seeing with Andy Shore. We're talking about dollars and cents in this parking ordinance, but our mayor is literally costing us what could turn out to be millions of dollars by his racism um, and his allowing of racism within his administration. Uh, you repeatedly make these type of situations. Um, you know, she talked about racism being a global pandemic and we understand that and everybody said that and the city council has. Um, but you, you have actively been told, I know that you've been told and understand that Michael Tobin, the assistant fire chief, has multiple HR complaints against himself and now you have just made him interim chief. I feel like you are here to demolish the progress that Lansing has made. I really literally feel, let's take you and everything you've done racially out of the equation. You're just terrible at your job. And this is why you've had to hire two, two uh, deputy mayors. You know, those are hundred and some thousand dollar jobs. And we're talking about pennies that the low income house or low income people need to save as far as this parking goes. And we're arguing those points when you're costing what could potentially be the city millions of dollars. Um, I know you usually pander to, you know, the business and, you know, uh, the unions and whatnot, but I'm here to tell you, man, I think that you really should heed warning that there's going to be a new voting pool that comes out your next election and this election itself that you're not going to be able to pander to. I think you're, I think that the people that are in your room that are telling you the things that you do are right. I mean, your, your Facebook post about the black Panther was so disrespectful to man to anybody in minority watching that, because we know everything that you've done. You're just terrible. Like whoever you have writing your Facebook post now, you need to talk to man because it's really hurtful. It's, 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 uh, it's dysfunctional from the position where you're at. Um, I just wish that you would just leave, man. I, I really do. So that our, my city uh, could move forward. Uh, the word that you use, they, we know who you were talking about. You're talking about us. Uh, that they that you're talking about is going to be huge when it comes back time around. I would like to speak to your donors and anybody donating money to Andy Shore. I will know who you are. I've already seen who's donated since May when all of you have known there's, that he's been upholding racism. I will call you out and go to the end of the earth to let everybody know you're upholding racism. Thank you, I see my time. Thank you, and our next speaker is John, followed by Amber Cooley. Go ahead, John. I just wanted to take a uh, quick moment to say, let's support the uh, Lansing Police Department. Let's not defund the police. Um, I, I think uh, the chief and his crew are doing a, a fine job. Um, if ever uh, a citizen's constitutional rights are not upheld uh, equitably, then that is, that is something that, uh, that the chief and uh, powers that be will definitely need to take care of. And I have faith that he and his department and local prosecutors will be able to do so. Um, you know, I, I hear a lot of, uh, a lot of anger from people. Um, uh, as a related point, I hear a lot of anger from people, but I don't hear a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, positive thinking and, uh, trying to solve problems. Um, and it, it's a shame. I, I think that, you know, we got, we got so much anger out there and not enough love. We, we all want to live in a good community. I think we, we all have something to contribute. Um, so I would urge the, the council um, to reject 
and ignore such uh, vitriolic uh, language. Um, so fund the police, please reject uh, Councilman Betts and Councilwoman Dunbar's um, uh, resolution to defund the police. It uh, doesn't have anything um, worth passing in it. I think it needs to be completely relooked. I think it comes from a good place. I think they might have good hearts and I think they want the same as everybody else in this community. But as it's written right now, it's, uh, it's, it's not even worth uh, the council's time voting. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And our final speaker is Amber Cooley. Go ahead, Amber. Hello, thank you. I'd like to talk to the parking ordinance. To the point of streets being crowded and looking trashy, I am really failing to understand how a 2 to 5 a.m. ordinance is going to make any difference in how the streets look during waking, out, waking hours. So I think this is a completely invalid argument. Um, secondly, if the parking passes and ticketing is kept, the price of a parking pass needs to be lowered. It is absolutely ridiculous to expect families that live paycheck to paycheck to spend $125 in one month sum. That's a grocery bill, an electric bill payment, and I think all this does is further increase keeping the poor poor. Everyone gets Amber Alerts, so we all know it's possible to send out an emergency notification for moving cars during snow removal and street sweepers. The same people that wouldn't move their car for an emergency notification are the same people who won't move their cars no matter what ordinance is placed. Again, an invalid argument. I understand a lot of effort went to putting the ordinance in place to begin with, but clearly more consideration needs to be put into who we are catering to and who we are hurting with this ordinance. Someone mentioned, and I would like to reiterate, that these are family homes and families in today's busy world need multiple cars and this kind of space wasn't planned for when these neighborhoods were built. If it's not about money and it's not about inv invalid arguments that I've just stated, this is an obsolete ordinance and needs to be reconsidered um, with great scrutiny. With that, I yield my time. Okay, thank you. That was our last speaker. All right, well, thank you, council. Um, you know, I wanna, Thank you for your attention this evening. We have no further business. Wish you a happy and restful Labor Day weekend. Let's not forget why we take the day off. Um, and then um, I will see you all back here on September 14th. So we are officially adjourned.